talked about this a bit. Dr. Rudy Tanzi says if you want to prevent Alzheimer's, live as though you're in fear of heart disease. Avoid a fatty diet, keep your cholesterol low, and exercise. Staying active is also a way to manage living with Alzheimer's, according to a Massachusetts pioneer in the field. Joe, do you have a good view there? Yeah. Okay, it's, a little, it's a Tuesday morning at the Decordova Museum in Lincoln, which today is hosting five special guests. Joe and Joan, Helen, Sue and Harriet are all senior citizens who live with Alzheimer's. What do you think, what are we looking at? Or what do we see here? The De Cordova is one of five area museums that take part in a national program called Artists for Alzheimer's. Docents like Peggy Cahill are trained to get these visitors to share reactions to the art, even when they don't exactly love what they see. What do we see here? They're showing themselves off. Artists for Alzheimer's is based on the pioneering work of sociologist Dr. John Zeisel, whose mission for the past two decades has been to give people with Alzheimer's a reason to live. One person coming back from a museum the other day said, as she walked out of the museum, I had such a good time, I think I'll live a little longer. Zeisel's approach to the disease is spelled out in his 2009 book, I'm still here. In the past, the definition of an Alzheimer's diagnosis is an Alzheimer's sentence. We, because we're afraid of the illness, we stigmatize the illness, we value cognitive stuff in the brain so highly that the minute that's damaged, instead of saying, well, I'm still there in many, many different ways, we counter out. We hear people say, I'm still here, and if you hear it, you start to have a relationship with them. Having seen so many failed approaches to the disease, Zysel created a number of Alzheimer's care facilities in Massachusetts called Hearthstone. Mission one, keep residents engaged throughout the day with classes and events, all of which can be adapted to a range of cognitive ability. Zysel says the idea is to erase the apathy that so often accompanies the disease. At the root of all of the problems is our acceptance of apathy as good behavior. Because what does it matter? Someone's just staring out the window or watching television. They aren't bothering anybody. It bothers them. So what happens when people don't have anything meaningful in their lives is they get excited, they, get, they fight with people, they do all these difficult things. To address the apathy, he says, is to do away with the overuse of psychotropic drugs, drugs which he claims are mind-numbing and deadly. The overuse of psychotropics to sedate agitated Alzheimer's patients has recently made headlines in Massachusetts. Basically, the psychotropic drugs turn you off, as opposed to turn you on. And if you're turned on, you live. And if you're turned off, you don't. Cosmas brought her husband Bill to Hearthstone in Marlboro last year after caring for him in their Washington, D.C. home for five years. It was a long struggle to find the right place. I must have looked at, at, at 10 or 11 or 12 different places in the, the surrounding area, all of them calling themselves top of the line, wonderful Alzheimer's care, imaginative, yakety yakety yak. And I, there wasn't one place, there was not one place that I would have had Bill live. I came up and I saw it and I couldn't believe it. They were engaged. Wow. Bill had had a long and successful career as a network producer, covering the likes of Henry Kissinger and Anwar Sadat for NBC News. Nancy Reagan once said about Alzheimer's that it was the long goodbye. And she's absolutely right. Uh, it is as sad today to me as it was when he was first diagnosed. But she says having Bill at Hearthstone has made a world of difference for both of them. Something of him is still there, and I'm very grateful. What was, oh, my very bone. <laughs> What's wrong with your bones? Oh, that's wonderful. Where have we, we been so long? Charles Zedek is in the later stages of Alzheimer's, yet he is something of a star at Hearthstone. The reason? 
Charles, with the help of his son Matt and the staff here, has managed to retain pieces of the man he has always been. Uh, he's worked so hard to beat this disease over the last decade, um, and I'm sure that's been a key part of his success is <laughs> that, uh, you know, he appreciates life uh, and having fun with it as much as possible. Matt says even this simple painting is most definitely his father's work, a man known for his big heart and his enormous sense of humor. Through hand motions, through smiles of the faces, through his uh, use of uh, vocabulary, he realizes that having fun and smiling, it's a key to success in life, and it's, uh, it's still there. And Charles Zedek, the man we just uh, met in the piece, wrote a small book right before his symptoms became obvious to his family. It's called The Ten Most Important Words in Your Life by Charles M. Zedek. It's a beautiful book, uh, just his thoughts uh, yeah. about life and the universe and faith and so on. And his son, Matt, believes that he wrote this because he knew something was happening to his mind and he wanted to get his get thoughts down. down on paper. Mm. If you're interested in seeing a copy of this, uh, you can go to our website and make the connection there. Your feedback on a recent show when Chronicle returns.